What's going on guys, Billy here, and right on the heels of our full M300 aircraft walkthrough video, I wanted to take the time to specifically look at the H20 and H20T camera systems that were built for that drone, because as feature-packed as the aircraft itself is, it's these cameras that really make it so powerful. Now, I only have the H20T here with me, but there are two cameras, two different payloads that make up the Zenmuse H20 lineup. There's the H20 and the H20T, and the only difference between them is that the H20T has a thermal sensor, hence why it has the letter T at the end of its name. The price difference between the two is $7,950, so that is how much just the thermal sensor costs inside of the higher end camera. Just know that as I go through this video, everything I say applies to both the H20 and H20T, except for when I touch on the thermal camera, that is reserved for the H20T. Now, right off of the bat, I've just got to mention that the H20 and H20T camera systems are truly impressive. You can use the M300 with older cameras like the X-T2 or the Z30, but it's these brand new cameras that were designed for the M300 that really make that drone as powerful as it can be because of everything that they offer, as we've already mentioned. But with that said, I still think there's a little bit of room that these cameras have to do to grow and become better in the future, but that'll become more apparent as we go through the rest of this video. So taking a closer look at the camera itself, it is an absolutely massive unit with a weight that is more than triple what a little DJI Mini 2 weighs. It has to be one of the largest camera systems built for a drone. I mean, it's basically the size of a mirrorless camera, but this is because it holds so many different sensors inside. The entire camera housing is also IP44 water resistant, whereas the drone is IP45 water resistant, so it actually has a lesser rating. While both of these will be fine to fly in the rain or in the snow, they likely won't hold up to a full submersion in the event of, say, a crash in water. As for the available sensors, there are three inside of the H20 and four inside of the H20T. Both camera systems have a wide-angle lens, a zoom lens, a laser rangefinder, and the H20T has a thermal sensor. So having three different sensors, three different cameras, as well as a laser rangefinder built into one camera unit really is impressive. I mean, you look at DJI's previous Zenmuse gimbals built for their enterprise drones. We had the Z30 that gave you a great optical zoom, but it lacked in photo quality, like for wide angle shots. And also it didn't have a thermal sensor. But if you look at the X-T2, it had two different cameras, right? It had a thermal camera and a wide angle camera without the ability to optically zoom in. So now they taken these two great systems and merged them into one, and that is the H20T. And what's great is when you're flying this on the M300, within the pilot app, you can switch between all the cameras effortlessly. You've got the thermal view, the zoom view, as well as the wide angle view. Now to dive a little bit deeper, let's quickly touch on the specs of the sensors. We'll start off with both of the color cameras, which make up the biggest and smallest element of the camera. The size difference between them is pretty hilarious, but you figure the zoom camera has to be a lot larger to accommodate the optical zoom. Here's the thing though, the zoom camera camera has all of the specs that you'd imagine a camera in 2022 would have. It can capture 20 megapixel photos and it shoots 4K video, but the wide camera is severely limited, only shooting 12 megapixel photos and 1080p video, which yeah, it gets the job done and space is tight when trying to fit four different sensors into one camera unit. But for such a high-end camera, it's really a shame that we have to deal with camera specs that are like straight out of 2016. Just to give you a frame of reference, the much smaller Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced utilizes a quad Bayer sensor to capture 48 megapixel photos. That is four times the resolution as the wide camera in the H20 and H20T. I just kind of wonder why they didn't use this same sensor to achieve higher quality images. It would be a a lot better for inspection purposes, which this drone and camera were primarily built for. Now look, are the images from that wide-angle camera usable? Yes, and so is the video. You could argue that shooting these lower resolution images between the photos and videos will actually be easier to store and transfer due to these smaller file sizes. I guess I also suppose that the use case for this camera is to get general photos and videos of specific areas in which the current specs are justifiable. Where resolution really matters is when focusing on a specific area of interest and the powerful zoom of the secondary camera can achieve that. I actually would probably consider this to be the main camera because of the specs that it offers. It's a really great feeling using the zoom to capture fine details from a stationary position during aerial inspections. This way you can keep the drone far away from the structure, mitigating the possibility of crashing. You could also use the zoom camera to identify subjects in a search and rescue mission while keeping the drone at a safe height above obstacles. Now, speaking of zoom, this camera has a hybrid zoom with most of the distance being covered by optical zoom and a small amount of 
digital zoom added at the end. It's really impressive how much detail can be captured when zooming all the way in 200 times. Like from a half a mile away, I'm able to zoom in and read the text on this sign. The capabilities of this zoom really are powerful and of course are helpful. You know, another great use case for the wide camera here on the H20 and H20T, again, the smallest sensor here on the entire unit, could be as like a stabilized FPV camera, right? So as you're flying the drone around, you use this wide camera. It helps you orient yourself, position the drone, and then when you want to shoot photos and videos, you switch over to the optical zoom camera, right? So that you can get the higher resolution photos and the higher resolution videos. I don't know, I feel like I'm stuck trying to defend this camera, but also I want to try and voice my disappointment, but I'll leave it at this. It's good enough. Now moving on here to the thermal camera, it's positioned here in the bottom right of the H20T camera and features all of the specs that you'd expect from a high-end aerial thermal camera. It delivers a nice smooth viewing experience with a 30 hertz refresh rate and the resolution is plenty for completing roof inspections and conducting search and rescue missions. If you've used any of DJI's recent enterprise drones equipped with thermal cameras like the Zenmuse X-T2 or the newer Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced, then you'll be familiar with the resolution in these photos and videos. The long side of the images measures 640 pixels, while the early thermal aerial cameras only had half of that resolution, with the long side maxing out at 320 pixels. The first Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual only had 160 pixels, which produced subpar images for inspection purposes. Like I just mentioned, there is plenty of detail here to see subjects on the ground in search and rescue situations, or small details in inspections. You can even zoom in up to 8 times, but it is digital, so I'd only reserve this for situations where you can't physically physically fly the drone closer. Moving on here, let's touch on the final sensor, if you will, and that is the laser rangefinder. To my knowledge, this is one of the most affordable camera systems with a built-in sensor that basically acts like LiDAR. Now, if you want a true LiDAR sensor, you would look into DJI's Zenmuse L1, but as a basic function for finding range, this sensor in the H20 and H20T is capable of finding the distance of a subject from the drone's position, unlocking a lot of powerful features and tools. For example, within the pilot app, if you select the range button in the top left of the screen, then you'll be able to see just how far away the object that you're pointing the camera at is. For example, looking at my car sitting down here in this parking lot, I can center the camera onto it and see just how far away it is from my drone in the top left corner. Using all of the information that the drone has, like its height, orientation, and location, it's then able to take the distance that it gathers from the laser rangefinder to show the position of the subject directly on the map. This will come in handy with some of the features that we'll discuss here shortly. So, so that is pretty much all that you need to know about the specs of the different cameras inside of the H20 and H20T. I'm going to leave a Dropbox link down in the description so that you can download some of the example photos and videos I've captured with the wide angle lens, with the zoom lens, as well as with the thermal lens here. So you're going to be able to bring them on your own computer, check them out for yourselves and figure out if this camera is right for you, which let me just say that this camera, as I've already mentioned, unlocks a lot of really great features when paired with the M300. You can use those older cameras, but when making use of like the H20T here, it really gives you like the ultimate aerial imaging experience. For example, I know that I already mentioned this, but I figured it would be good to provide a little bit more insight. Within the pilot app, you can switch between the wide, zoom, and thermal cameras. You can also view two cameras side by side, but something interesting to note is that when switching between the zoom and wide camera, it has a green outlined box showing the frame of what your zoom camera is capturing. This allows you to look at a wider field of view, frame your shot, and then flip over to the zoom camera. A feature that I really like when using these cameras is the ability to capture photos and videos from all of the cameras simultaneously. So if I'm looking at the thermal camera and I capture a photograph, I can select what cameras I want to also capture a photograph at the same time. So no matter which camera I'm looking at, I'm always capturing data from all of the other lenses simultaneously. So if I'm capturing thermal photos, I know that there is a zoomed photo as well as a wide photo to accompany that that I can include, say, in an inspection report. Now, remember how I was complaining about the wide camera? not capturing high resolution photos, well, a way to capture very detailed photos is through a feature called high res grid photo. So basically, it stitches multiple photos together taken close up from the zoom camera. It's kind of like the panorama features that are built into DJI's consumer level drones, but for the purpose of high level inspections. We can access this feature by choosing the camera settings and selecting high res grid photo from the different shooting modes. Using the wide camera, you can then move the grid to select the area that you want captured. To further 
customize the resolution of your photo, you can increase the zoom on the right side of the screen, which adds more boxes or photos that the zoom camera will take to stitch together. Take this photo, for example, that I captured of the cell tower. This wide photo was taken from where the drone was hovering, so I am quite far away from the tower itself. I then zoomed in and snapped one photo at 10x zoom, which shows a lot more detail, but to boost this resolution even more, we can pull up the photo that was captured using high res grid. This image has a resolution of 17,029 by 17,709, and if we zoom in, we can literally see the individual screws and connection points of the wires. This could have been an even higher resolution photo too if I got a little closer to the tower and made the grid larger. Nonetheless, this is a great tool to use for capturing high quality photos of accidents, cell towers, signs, I mean really anything you need a high level detail view of. Now, towards the end of the specs section of this video, we mentioned the laser rangefinder that's built into both the H20 and H20T. Now, as a standalone feature, you might not think it's all that helpful to be able to tell how far away a specific subject is from where your drone is currently hovering, but when it's paired with some of the other sensors that's built inside of this camera, it unlocks some really powerful features like pinpoint and smart track. Pinpoint is a pretty simple feature that adds points displayed through augmented reality icons right on the live feed from the camera within the pilot app. This is great for marking areas of interest during inspections and when paired with DJI's flight hub can relay information back to your team regarding key locations. So if you as the drone operator say find a person of interest, ground teams can intervene through real time data. And the reason that this is so accurate is because of the laser rangefinder. Smart track on the other hand is a feature that resembles spotlight and active track in other DJI drones as the camera trains on a subject and adjusts the zoom to keep it in frame. While the zoom camera does all of the work tracking, you can then switch to the wide camera to get a full perspective as well, or even the thermal camera if that's something that you want to do. Now taking this a step further, by utilizing the laser rangefinder, the drone is able to determine the location of the subject that you're tracking. It's able to accomplish this by taking all the available information, the aircraft location, direction, distance, and height to then provide that location, which like pinpoint, can be relayed back to your team through DJI Flight Hub. Now, much like other DJI drones that come equipped with a thermal camera, the thermal sensor in the H20T can provide a lot of great real-time data to the operator directly through the pilot application. Directly from the app, you can find temperature data by tapping on the screen. Using area measurement, you can find the hottest, lowest, and average temperature of a selected area. You can receive alerts through the temperature alarm feature when a certain area exceeds your predefined temperature limit, and there are plenty of ways to customize the viewing experience through isotherms and different color palettes. So to wrap this video, up, I want to quickly give you my take on the Zenmuse H20 and H20T. It's pretty much a whole lot of what we've seen in previous DJI drones combined together in one unit, which is its biggest strength. So if we kind of break down the camera, the wide camera is pretty much more or less what we get in the DJI Mini 2. The zoom camera is, again, more or less what we have in the Zenmuse Z30. The thermal camera is a lot like what we see in the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced and the X-T2. And of course, the rangefinder is pretty much entirely new. But if we take a look at those three different sensors, it's pretty much three different cameras from three different DJI drones combined into one unit, and that is what makes it so powerful, because you have all of these different options put into one single package. So it's great that on the M300, you can hang two different payloads underneath of the drone, but realistically, you kind of only need one. This one right here, the HT20, it gets every single job done that you need inside of one unit. And again, that's what makes it so powerful. That is the draw to the H20T here. Now, as I mentioned, there is some room for improvement. I think that they could potentially give us like optical zoom on the thermal camera. Maybe they could increase the optical zoom here on the um, zoom camera. So give us more than what was it like the 20 or 23 times optical zoom range that we get from that. And also please increase the resolution on the wide camera. And then we're set right there. I just pretty much gave DJI plans for the H30T. <laughs> All right, so hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts on the H20 and H20T down in the description comments section below. And as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.